The gut microbiome has been implicated in everything from cancer to mental health. Um, And as we've begun to understand this more deeply, there's been this kind of tantalising question of can we use science to smartly improve and fine tune our microbiota in a way to sort of prevent or even treat these diseases. Mm. So this week, there's news from a small trial that gave people genetically engineered microbes in an attempt to prevent kidney stones from forming. Niche. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, not, not actually. Kidney stones affect one in 10 people, apparently. So right. quite common. Okay. Could this be the first step, though, is the, is the big yeah. question yeah, yeah. towards gene editing our microbiome and, and treating all kinds of things. And Grace Wade is here to tell us more. Hi. So what's really interesting about this study is that usually when researchers have tried to change people's gut microbiota, they either focus on giving them naturally occurring gut bacteria or genetically modified bacteria. But this usually doesn't work because these newly introduced bacteria struggle to move into the gut ecosystem and successfully establish themselves there. So Weston Whitaker at Stanford University and his colleagues have genetically modified a bacterium that is already abundant in most people's guts called Fosiacola vulgatus. And he told me they chose this one because they know it's already good at colonizing the gut. Right. So uh, what genetic changes then did they make to this bacterium? Well, they wanted to reduce the formation of kidney stones, so they made three genetic changes that together enabled the bacterium to break down oxalates. These are dietary compounds that contribute to kidney stones. And they also boosted these bacteria's chances of survival over and above the bacteria already living in the gut. When they gave rats these bacteria and fed them a high oxalate diet, they found that the bacteria reduced the levels of oxalates in these rats' urine by about half compared with controls. Okay, and uh, have they given it to people? Yeah, so they did. They gave it to nine people who have this condition called enteric hyperoxaluria, which makes the body absorb too much oxalate. And so what ends up happening is people with this condition keep getting kidney stones. Ew. And (laughs) it sounds awful. (laughs) For them, And over the 28-day trial, the researchers found the bacteria brought down oxalate levels by about 25%. And, you know, while that sounds small, other trials suggest just a 20% reduction would be enough to reduce the symptoms of this condition. So uh, as we mentioned, kidney stones are actually quite common. um, And if you get one, there is a decent chance that you'll get another one. So it is this kind of recurrent thing. So I can see how this is cool for that. But I I guess what we're really interested in here is, is this the first step to taking this much more widely and, and engineering bacteria to treat lots of other conditions? Absolutely. You know, one expert I spoke with described this approach as a real breakthrough because it shows that it actually is possible to get engineered gut microbes to colonize the gut and also to have a therapeutic effect. And these are things that we've so far been struggling to do. So if we can finesse this approach, there are so many conditions that the microbiome has been linked to. Alzheimer's, diabetes, chronic fatigue syndrome, and it potentially opens up a whole new approach for targeting these. Yeah, targeting those, but also mood, desire, mm. and many different cognitive things. Um, it's really, it's really exciting. This. Um, I went to this lab at Imperial College. Um, they're making this synthetic symbiotic living materials mm. that you would potentially one day use as an implant in the body. So at the moment, they're thinking of them just as sort of external patches on wounds, um, and but it produces hormones and enzymes. Uh, that the body might need and they might he- speed up wound healing. Um, so they've made these things called sin scobies. A scoby, um, if you made kombucha or mm. vinegar, um, a scoby is the mother of, of vinegar or the mother of kombucha. So that's like your starting culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so scoby stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Mm. And what making a synthetic one means that you get those two uh, organisms that produce the material and then you gene edit them to make the thing you want. Mm. So you can make the yeast produce um, whatever enzyme or nutrient you want. You make this material and then uh, you can either put it on the wound and it helps that or in the future maybe ingest it and it will produce any hormones or enzymes that you you want or need. Gosh, that's quite mind-blowing. It's really cool. Uh, One of the clever things they did in this study, Grace, was that they engineered these bacteria to be able to digest a a seaweed carbohydrate. And the idea was that you then eat the seaweed and it gives the engineered bacteria a competitive advantage and it helps them establish in your gut. Um, And then when you're done being treated, you could just stop eating the seaweed and the bacteria sort of fade away, which is quite a clever mechanism. 
Yeah, it's a, a really innovative and elegant solution to this problem they've been having of finding a way for, you know, the engineered microbes to colonize the gut. So how did it pan out? Did it work well? Well, some of the participants did have mild gastrointestinal problems, you know, which you might expect when tinkering with the gut microbiome. But perhaps a bigger issue is the genetic sequencing of the gut microbiome showed that special genes that enabled the bacteria to feed off this carbohydrate had spread. You know, they actually swapped their genetic material with other bacteria in the gut. They must have half expected that because that that's what bacteria do, isn't it? They're just always yeah. uh, horizontally sw- swapping swapping genes around. It's not really something you want happening in your body, though, if you're trying <laughs> to like fine tune these genetically engineered bacteria inside you. Yeah, you need a kill switch somehow, don't you, to stop that? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's certainly something they want to iron out in future studies. The good news is, you know, this uh, the genes they gave these bacteria, they don't believe will cause any, you know, harm or are concerning at all in the participants. Super interesting. Looking forward to seeing what happens with this in the future. Mm -hmm.